All right, look, here's a fun fact for you. I've been playing competitive Pokemon since the early days of Diamond and Pearl. It's been like 15 years. And I'll tell you what, I've had this same Metacham on my teams since the beginning because this thing is extremely powerful and it's really fun to use. So we're gonna show the OG boy off today and let you know why you must respect the Metacham. Even though it looks weird, it will absolutely ruin your day. So today we're working with a nice and powerful NU tier match, and I decide to lead off with the Sandaconda, and it turns out, from the start, I do not want none, because Frog over here is actually a pretty scary mon. So in these never used tier matches, people are starting to find out that using things like Frogadier and not fully evolved starters are actually extremely powerful and have a lot of strong niches. So, I decide I have to get my ass out of here, and I decide to go into the Ampharos. Now this thing is wearing an Assault Vest, which you cannot see, but he's pretty damn thick, especially defensively. So. I actually take a Surf there, and that is way more damage than I would have expected. So I'm actually thinking right from the start that this frog is probably choice specs. And that thing hits extremely hard, and honestly, it's pretty bad for my team. So I decide to go for the Volt Switch, and that is because I'm expecting this fat pink asshole, the Chansey, to come in and just do its sponge-type special defensive things. And the Volt Switch allows me to get a nice little pivot and try to build myself some momentum here. Um, so I have a couple different options going into the Chansey. And I decide, as is tradition, I'm gonna switch into Ballin real quick. So, I have an interesting matchup here. I'm actually looking at their team thinking I can probably set up my Toxic Spikes here, try to get a layer or two, um, and really, they don't have any way of getting rid of that. So, I decide to go for that T-Spikes turn one. Uh, he is actually gonna end up switching out the Chansey and bring right in the Jolteon. So, this is a scary matchup for me, of course, but there's been so much switching early on and trying to just grab uh, some good positioning that I'm thinking maybe, just maybe this thing over-predicts, maybe expects me to go into the Sandaconda, which is kind of the obvious switch here. So I'm instead actually just gonna stay in and go for the Toxic Spikes again. I want two layers because these Poison Legos are gonna be real fun to step on when they come in here and I can get some nice chip damage uh, and residually just knock shit down. But Jolteon has other plans other than going for like an ice move. He actually ends up going for the normal Terra, puts the diamond on his head. I can't see shit, he's blinging out over here and he ends up going for the Hyper Voice, which I definitely did not expect to see that. He yells at me. And with that extra damage from the Terra, I am going to die. So, did not even have to go for the electric move and does take care of Quillfish, but I was able to get up my spikes, which is fine. That's going to hang around and help me out a little bit in the long run, but I don't have my, you know, switch into an Intimidate Mon with the Quillfish, so that kind of sucks. However, I can now bring in the Metacham, and bringing in Metacham against the Jolteon here kind of reveals that I am going to be Choice Scarf. Most of the time, you will see Metacham carrying that Choice Scarf. He definitely... He needs these fat ass legs to be going a little bit quicker with that scarf. The extreme damage from its huge power ability, plus that close combat is going to do a lot to pretty much everything on his team. And to my surprise, he actually ends up switching into Ursaring here. Now my thought process there is Ursaring doesn't do much to my team, and he basically just needed something as a fodder switch, and Ursaring kind of just had to, you know, take these saggy titty legs to the chest, and that's going to knock it out. So, now they get the free switch, and they decide to go into Pissimian. So. Pissimian versus Metacham is actually a really interesting matchup. The main reason is because both of these Pokemon are kind of notorious for being Choice Scarf users, but also, the weird fact is, they actually have the same exact base speed. So if he's running the plus speed nature with the uh, Choice Scarf, we're actually going to be an exact speed tie. And that is a gamble I'm not really willing to take yet with the Metacham, especially uh, being locked into the close combat. So I decide to switch back into the Sandaconda. Unfortunately for me, they go for the U-turn and then is able to bring right back in the Frog against... Uh, Santa Conda does not have any fun with this. Choice Spec Surf is definitely going to knock me out. Uh, but Pretzel does look really nice for me in the late game. It's a mod that I can switch into that Pissimian if needed. And just overall, a pretty bulky fella. I'm not really willing to lose here. Plus, I do have the switch into the Ampharos. It doesn't really provide me much value in this match other than kind of the matchup against the Frog. So I decided to bring this thing in seeing as the Surf did so much damage initially. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to come in and take two Surfs. But it's worth a try because... I don't have any, really many other options. So he does go for that Surf. Ampharos in his little vest over here just waddling around. And uh, Assault Vest isn't helping me out because Choice Specs Frog does entirely too much. And then two Surfs does knock me out. It must have been a little bit of a roll there. So if I was able to live on just a few HP, knocking this out with a Thunderbolt or something like that would have been extreme value. But, you know, they got the poison doing its thing over here thanks to Deadass Quillfish you know, haunting these things from the grave. But that's amazing. And now I get a free switch into whatever I want. So... Here's the thought process. I'm going to bring in Eugene Krabs. Ordinarily, shit matchup. I'm a rock type. and not going to have a fun time with this. However, 
I can go ahead and Terra right into that water type and set up a Swords Dance here. So I'm actually thinking this might actually work out perfectly. I'm thinking maybe I go Water Terra. It stays in, goes for the Surf. It might even knock me down to range where I can get my Anger Shell to activate, plus a Swords Dance. And this crab is going to be the scariest crab on this side of the Mississippi. So, I put a Waterfall on my head. This thing does stay in and go for the Surf. And as you're going to see, unfortunately it does not quite knock me to half, which is actually pretty bad. I need that boost from this thing's ability, but at least I'm able to get up a Swords Dance. And now, the frog, it knows it can't knock me out. If it stays in and goes for another Surf, uh, it's just going to give me that Anger Shell. So they're kind of forced to switch here. So this gives me a free position to try to go for a Trailblaze, just to get a little bit of a speed boost. I'm not, If I'm not able to get it the traditional way, with my ability being activated, I'm going to get it with that uh, Trailblaze. So, decides to switch into Chansey, comes in, does take that Poison, and uh, Fat-Ass Chansey is going to take a Trailblaze. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and that's because... Eugene's still working on it. I only have one Swords Dance and a non-stab Trailblaze. Pretty much just there to try to chip things off and get that extra speed. Uh, but now I'm thinking I do at least have a Swords Dance. And Chansey cannot knock me out here. And if it does do anything, it's going to just knock me to ang uh, Anger Shell. So, I go for the High Horsepower. Unfortunately, it is able to live just barely. And goes for the worst possible move for me to take at this point. And that is the Thunder Wave. Because now my speed is halved and they can basically just revenge kill, but at least in the process, I'm able to take care of Chansey. I'm actually still even faster after Para um, because of that Trailblaze boost initially, so I go for another Trailblaze, and I'm at least able to take care of Chansey. That's an extremely annoying-ass Pokemon always. It's literally been 20 years Chansey's been pissing me off in battles, but finally, that thing is dead, and now they get the free switch back into Bolt, who uh, I actually haven't seen the item from this thing, so I'm expecting, honestly, maybe this is Specs also. Um, when you see Hyper Voice, I was thinking maybe uh, Throat Spray, but I didn't actually see that activate, and I do not have anything that wants to switch into this. So, unfortunately, Crab does have to go down here, but if I was able to get that Anger Shell going, and plus that Swords Dance, you mark my words, this thing was almost scary. You're just lucky that uh, it wasn't that scary, but he was at least cool and blue looking. So, Cloth going down is not the end of the world, because this opens up Revenge Switch, and I personally have, like, the greatest and most fun Revenge Switcher of all time, and that is going to be the absolute legend nipple knees. I can bring this thing in, he knows that I'm going to be able to outspeed because I've pretty much revealed my scarf, and especially with this thing being normal type, a close combat is certainly going to kill it, and he doesn't have much that wants to switch into this. So, Bolt just stays in, I go ahead and break the shit out of his diamonds, and that is going to be a dead Jolteon. So, that's another very scary Pokemon out of the way. Scarf Metacham is out here, login KO number two, and what are you going to do against a well-played Metacham? Nothing. That's what you're going to do. So, they get a free switch now, and unfortunately, Crocolore is a Mon who generally is going to be carrying the Eviolite item because it's not fully evolved, so it gets that extra bulk on top of already being a fat, bulky boy. And I definitely need to save Metacham. It's kind of my win condition in this match. It outspeeds the Passimian. I do have the type coverage on it, and I definitely need to ensure that this thing stays around. So, my easiest switch into here is definitely going to be the Sandaconda. I know that potentially this thing will is, but I'm Shedskin. But he actually ends up predicting the switch into the Sandaconda, makes a fantastic play, and goes right into the frog. So that's kind of a checkmate on my end. Either I switch and I conserve Pretzel, or I stay in and just suffer the fate of uh, him drowning my snake alive. Now, weighing the options here, I know that he has two Pokemon out other than this frog left. He's got the Crocolore, and he has the Passimian. So my thought process is I need to save Sandaconda basically for that crocodile, because it's kind of my only thing I have, um, other than Pyroar, can't do too much damage to it. So my plan is I switch into the Pyroar here and basically take the Surf. Now the reason for that is because sometimes you just gotta sack some shit off. We've seen it earlier in the match and we've seen it here. Pyroar doesn't get to do a damn thing other than die, unfortunately, but that opens the door and puts me actually in a better position because now I have Sandaconda for the Crocodile and I have Metacham who can come in here, outspeed, pressure this thing to either stay in or they can try to switch into something, but regardless, if they switch to Passimian, it's likely going to die, or then they have to roll a speed tie. So, I do just go for the close combat here. I want to just get maximum damage if they decided to go into the Crocodile. Uh, Crocodile comes in and likely takes more than half from that anyway, so... He makes the best play, ends up staying in here, and Frog goes down. That is a very scary Mon out of the way that's been pissing me off all day, putting that pressure on my team, so... Love to see that thing gone, but now we do have to deal with old Egghead over here. And this is exactly why we sack off the Pyro, because now I have the easy switch right back into Sandaconda against this thing. And um, it's not going to likely be able to be a 2-hit KO, plus I probably outspeed. So, does go for the Flamethrower here, and that actually does a pretty decent chunk, but not quite enough, as now 
I can basically, all I need to do with Sandaconda, my main objective, is just whittle this thing to the point where I can just chip it with Metacham and take it out. So, the poison is going to help me out a little bit in that regard, and I just go right for the Earthquake here. Can't really switch into Pissimian here, but the Earthquake is not going to be able to knock this thing out, but it definitely puts it in easy range for Metacham to come in and just get that late game little, little sweepage going. Uh, so it does go for the flamethrower here, and now is where I'm a little bit worried about potential, um, like, Pissimian not dying to Metacham, because it's going to come down to this final Choice Scarf matchup, and that shit is scary. So, here's where I find out, I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock. This thing dies to its next turn of poison anyway, there's no point in me going for the Earthquake, so I'm just going to click Stealth Rock, in that now <laughs> when Pissimian comes in, he's going to take, like, two extra HP damage, and just help me that extra tiny little bit, so... I go for that Stealth Rock here, Sandaconda dying here is fine because I'm just basically banking on this final matchup. Flamethrower does take care of me, but Quillfish from the grave is going to knock out the Crocolore. So, I actually have not played against young Pablo much, that's what I call this thing, he's Pablo to me. But, I haven't played against many not fully evolved starters, but these things are absolutely menaces in the tier. So, down goes the Crocolore, and now we've finally got the matchup that Nipple Knee's been waiting for all day. And, it's a speed tie, so it's a 50-50 on who's gonna go first here, but the good news is, Metacham does have the Zen Headbutt, and obviously Psychic should be able to take care of the Pissimian, and I don't think, at full HP, Metacham should be able to take pretty much any attack Pissimian wants to throw at me, but that's hopeful. So, this thing comes in with its melon ready to party, and I, all I have to do is win a speed tie here. I go for the Zen Headbutt, and I lose the speed tie. It goes for the Gunk Shot, but luckily, Nipple Knee got all the thickness in his knees, and I'm able to live that, and a Zen Headbutt does take care of the Pissimian. So that is going to be the end of the match, and Choice Scarf Metacham, with that pure power, is exactly that. Is, a, is that pure power, baby. So that's going to be the end of the match. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.